I used to be so incredibly jealous this is the first time admitting this. So incredibly jealous of Eddie Trunk, even though him and I could not be t- more different. We are so different, but I was so jealous of Eddie because Eddie is emceeing every concert and every show. Eddie is the MC, And I'd be like, why don't I get to host anything? Why don't I host anything? And Leah's like, like, Mm, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. And I'm like, okay, but I wish I could be asked. And I still sometimes am like, why am I not hosting this? Why am I not hosting that? And, um, and especially because like, you know, he's in his fifties. It's not like he's some young kid, but you know, and then I started doing spoken word and started doing one foot in the gutter. And I'm like, Oh no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm glad that those things that I wanted so bad didn't happen. You know, I was supposed to be the host of ink master and they told me oh, to really? book off. They told me to book off the time that I'm going to be hosting Ink Master. They said you are the host of Ink Master, and then I didn't get a call from them for three weeks. And then they called and they said, "Okay, it's between you and Dave Navarro," yeah. which is something I've heard several times. And I think it's Dave Navarro three, Ricky zero, <laughs> and Dave Navarro always got the jobs. But if I would have hosted Ink Master, I wouldn't have met. I would have met my wife because she was on season one of Ink Master. But you don't try to sleep with the contestants and you don't try to do that and I would have been the co- cocky TV host and so thank God I didn't get that job which I thought was the greatest thing in the world and I didn't get it and then 15 years later so you never know which direction things are going to mm-hmm. lead you you never yeah. know Yeah, somebody cuts you off you're late 15 minutes maybe you were supposed to be 15 minutes for late I don't know. I don't think that answered your question at all did it? Did I just go off? No, well, no I love that. You know, you know who that's you like? Know. You know who that's like? David Lee Roth. Oh, dude. David Lee Roth, you interview David Lee Roth and you're like, David Lee Roth, tell me what it's like playing in Paris. Well, let me tell you something. I'm, I can't do an imitation. It's like, well, let me tell you something. It is incredible when you're up on stage and you're drinking the Jack and then you get into that limousine and you know your jacuzzi has had it and you got this in. I'm like, no, that wasn't what I asked you. You know? How many times have you, like, who are some of the guys like that that you've interviewed that were, I know what I'm going to get with David Lee Roth? I know Dave Mustaine's going to give me shit. I know Dave Mustaine is going to try to break me down as much as he can. <laughs> um, and the other thing that I learned is sometimes interviewing your friends isn't good. Not a good idea. It's not great. And that was tough for me when I'm having to interview Tammy or Mike Muir or, or Gilby or any of these people because they're not the best interviews. You know, instead when you're interviewing people, you know, so yeah. there's certain people and there was, you know, I used to hate C.C. DeVille. Now he's fine. But um, there were certain people, you know, that's why that whole Nirvana thing, when I interviewed Kurt Cobain, that everybody's seen it a billion times, I was just bummed because he didn't really want to be on Headbangers Ball. And I'm like, there's a lot of bands that really want to be on Headbangers Ball and you don't even want to be here? Fucking go home. Yeah. And I loved Nirvana at that point. So I was just like, you know, if you don't want to get interviewed, don't get interviewed. I like to have conversations like we're doing now. That's what I like to do. Yeah. And when I watch old episodes of the Headbangers Ball, I did not do that. I read stuff up a card and I was terrible. Well, it was a little crazier, wasn't it? It was totally not well, how scripted was it? It was pretty much just off never the wall. So, well, they would write down the questions to ask. They didn't, they would sort of tell me what to say to open it and do my hair up and do this. But you got to understand it because look at Ricky. He's so nervous. It's like, Oh my God, I'd never been on TV before. Imagine your first time ever being on television. You're the host of Headbangers Ball. But what is then what was it about you that why why do you stick in the other guys when it first starts? Don't it's not the notoriety of Headbangers Ball is Ricky Rackman. Authenticity. That's okay. I can't say that, but you can. Um truth. Carol Donovan, who was the producer of Headbangers Ball, and she was talking to him. I don't remember who it was she was talking to, but she goes, but Ricky was real. Even though there's a lot of people that hated me because I didn't play their genre of music enough, which people always did take out on me personally. But it was like, I was part of the scene. I really yeah. was. It wasn't like I was time to put on a leather jacket and talk about Megadeth. The it's other, like, other no, hosts were almost like, too no. TV polished. Like, yeah, now I'm going to interview Megadeth, which is good because last week I was at the Megadeth show and here's Dave Mustaine at the cat house, you know? So, and and after a while, like... You were embedded. R- right now, like because of MTV and because of all the talk radio show, I did a lot of talk radio. I think I'm really good at what I do now. I've always kind of done things 
the way I've done things, you know? I, I did a David Lee Roth and didn't answer your question. I just kind of <laughs> I was like, I want, I was looking for the end point there. I'm like, okay, there's my logo right there. Okay. Now, um, David Lee Roth can come up with a analogy that will blow your mind just right off the top of his head. But you know, you take the A and the B and you put them in the C and you're at the beach and all of a sudden you got a coconut and a pineapple and it's party time. <laughs> well, you got to watch. You got to watch. And I'll be posting this on my Patreon. David Lee Roth on Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan is talking to Dave about the old days. And Dave, David Lee Roth is talking about playing in Van Nuys in this not great neighborhood, which is where I grew up. And um, at a store called The Rock Corporation. It went past a place called The Rock Corporation. This fellow, Ricky Ratchman, who was a VJ for many years with Headbangers Ball. I remember that guy. Yeah. Well, his father was owned the bar at the time okay and his mother and they were both uh in a bike club now here's 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 the true story okay i lived with my mom and my stepdad my mom was a school teacher stepdad was a principal i was a horrendous student getting all f's and getting suspended and we lived in the valley and on Van Nuys Boulevard, way back in the day, it was cruise night. Everybody would bring their low riders and their hot rods. And we used to just sit on the street and Wednesday night as kids. And I remember riding my bicycle by this club, the Rock Corporation. And there was a dead biker face down. And I went, whoa. And that was the first time I saw a dead body was in front of the Rock Corporation in Van Nuys. That's the story. David Lee Ross says, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> When Van Halen got their start, it was at a place called the Rock Corporation. You know Ricky Rackman, the guy from MTV? Yeah. Well, his parents are bikers, and they owned a biker bar. And so and so David Lee Roth telling the story about this notorious biker bar owned my, by my parents. There's, no, there's, I told you, my parents are not bikers. Um, in the Rock Corporation, I just rode my bicycle by it and saw a dead body. But... You know, that's a story that I, I probably shouldn't have told you the truth because it's much cooler saying that Ricky's parents are bikers and they own a biker gang, yeah, biker, if, bike club. If Roth and that was what it. David Lee Roth said on Joe Rogan. And I was like, I'm like, I'm like, bro, bro, what? <laughs> who killed the biker? But the thing is, is nobody who watched that did not believe David. He could right. he could tell you a story that's the most untrue story and you think it's the gospel because he's so confident. Well, he's so fast too. with it too, yeah. Sometimes yeah, the nice. fiction's better than the truth. I think for me, it's not. The truth has always been better. But in that case, the fiction is better than the truth. Like, I probably should never say it. I should probably just keep on playing that. And so, because I am a biker, and everybody to say, like, oh, yeah, Ricky's parents were also bikers. <laughs> they weren't. <laughs>